Welcome to another edition of RCE. Again, this is Brock Palin. You can find us online at rce-cast.com. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Brock Palin, all one word. That's Palin with an E, not with an I. That's been a common mistake lately. Uh, I also have here Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and OpenMPI. And I keep forgetting, H.W. Loke. He's also H.W. That's Loke. right. So, um... I saw Bryce sent out an email that uh, he's going to be at SC, so you can meet the HW Lope guys and some other guests that we've had on the show before. Oh, and he's going to be giving a talk in a Cisco booth. Oh, he's he going to give a talk about HW Lope in the Cisco booth. So come there, get your free Cisco shirt, and if you're lucky, get your free RCE shirt. Oh yeah, yeah, we have the RCE uh, shirts to give away. Both of both of us will have some. Um, you will be uh, Jeff will be around the Cisco booth, and I will be just floating around all over the place as Michigan does not have a booth. So, okay, so our guest today is Daniel Templeton, who uh, of formerly of Sun, now of Oracle, representing the Oracle Grid Engine, formerly Sun Grid Engine, and hopefully a lot of this confusion with the transition of Sun into Oracle, Dan can set us straight. So, uh, Dan, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself? Sure. So, um, yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've been at Sun for, well, way too long. I, uh, I uh, drank quite a bit of the Kool-Aid and bled Sun Blue for, for uh, many, many years. I uh, started out in the Grid Engine team as one of the developers and then just kind of uh, couldn't keep my mouth shut and eventually ended up as the product manager, which is uh, where I sit today now at Oracle. Okay, so you've been um, product manager of SGE, OGE. What is the... Uh, I, I, I've seen Oracle Grid Engine out there. A lot of people still call it Sun Grid Engine. Um, what is the official name of it right now? Is it, is it Oracle Grid Engine? The, the official name is Oracle Grid Engine, although all of the binaries are still uh, acronymed to SGE. So if you look in the you know the SGE Q Master, SGE Exec D, et cetera, uh, and I don't think we're actually going to change that. Okay. So can you give us a rundown? What is uh, OGE? Is a scheduler, resource manager, uh, a product like Globus? What what is it? Um, well, so OGE is it's the alpha and the omega. Uh, it is uh, the, the the universal resource manager. Uh, the the whole idea of uh, Grid Engine and and the, uh, the the other similar products that are out there is to take a set of resources and a set of incoming workload and make the best use of those resources to satisfy that workload. And the, the place where uh, Grid Engine really shines is when you have, say, multiple users from multiple different organizations running multiple different uh, applications, and they're all competing over those resources. And the more users and groups and applications you throw at it, the more interesting Grid Engine gets because scalability is one of our hallmarks. So, what, what's the history of SGE and OGE, and you know, how did you come to be where you are today? Where did you start from, and all that? Yeah, so well, Grid Engine uh, came about as uh, a company founded in Germany uh, in 1990, maybe 1989. Uh, the way, way back when, Grid Engine is a, a very old, very mature product at this point. Um, Sun picked the company up in 99, I believe it was, and then uh, released the first open source version of it in 2001. So it was actually a closed source product prior to Sun's acquisition of, uh, of Gridware. And uh, then Sun opened it up in 2001, uh, so we had the product and then also the Grid Engine Open Source Project. And uh, that went on merrily for a while under a variety of names. It had been Sun Grid Engine, Sun Grid Engine Enterprise Edition, Sun in One Grid Engine, back to Sun Grid Engine. And then the Oracle acquisition happened, and now we are Oracle Grid Engine, and uh, we, we now it's actually okay to just colloquially call it Grid Engine. No, well, that certainly simplifies things quite a bit. So you you mentioned uh, a second ago that scalability is one of your trademarks. What do you what do you mean by that remark? Um, well, so if you go look, uh, for example, one of our uh, uh, top customers, that if you've ever talked to anyone from Sun, uh, in the first three minutes of the conversation, they will bring up uh, Texas Advanced Computing Center. Uh, we were all brainwashed to do that. Uh, Texas Advanced Computing Center's uh, Ranger system, which debuted, I think, at number three on the top 500 list. Uh, is 63,000 cores running under a single grid engine uh, master. Uh, it's, uh, grid engine is designed for scalability in these cutting-edge HPC-type environments. Right? Um, TAC is the largest system in deployment that I'm aware of, but they, uh, have, they are far from the ceiling of the product's capabilities. 
So when you say scalability, do you mean scalability of cores or scalability of queue depths or policy limits or what what exactly do you mean by scalability? Because frequently just, you know, that word is kind of bandied about without real, you know, strict definitions. Sure. So, well, actually, I I mean in all categories, although not necessarily all at the same time. Um, So if you look at, for example, uh, we've got a customer uh, in the EDA software space that's doing 30-some-odd million jobs a month um, in a relatively small cluster. Um, So throughput, we can handle a a really decent number. We can handle a really decent queue depth, um, particularly if you get into parametric or array jobs. Grid Engine does that better than than most other schedulers out there. The way the way we treat a uh, an array job, you know, a million task array job is no different than a one task array job to us. And so you, you get really great scalability uh, with regard to array jobs or parametric jobs. But e- even uh, even so, you talk about a queue depth of a few hundred thousand jobs. That's that's not a big deal. Um, and yeah, and based on cores and uh, uh, for us. Scalability is really the, the deciding factors are queue depth and number of m- machines that you're managing. It really doesn't matter how many slots are on those machines, because right, slots for us is, is a very arbitrary concept. So, you know, whether these machines are single core or 16 core pff, is, is irrelevant as far as scalability goes. So what about managing uh, dispersed systems? You call it a grid engine, and a lot of people think of grids as dispersed machines, volunteer computing, something like that. Uh, how's it compared to something like, say, Boink or uh, Condor? So, uh, well, I, it's uh, it's kind of a philosophical difference, I, I think, between, say, uh, grid engine and Condor. Um, grid engine does not assume that it is strewn out all across the world um, in the way that some of the grid purists uh, might define grid. All right, so this is grid. Grid was as uh, specifically defined back in the day that grid engine was named grid engine um, as cloud is specifically defined today. Right, it wasn't. There, there's no specificity to the definition then, and there isn't now. Um, so what we consider grid is being able to put your machines together to aggregate the compute, aggregate the resources, and derive greater business value out of it. Um, we do differ from the, the grid purists who uh, uh, say, you know, it's not a grid unless you've got a machine in London and a machine in Tokyo and, and the, the master sitting in California and everybody's uh, sharing work around. And uh, in a large degree, that's because in a practical sense, that's just really hard, not necessarily from the uh, scheduler's perspective, but from the making use of it perspective, because it's all about the data, right? And you don't want to go ship terabytes of data all over the world. That, that's just a bad thing. Um, so, you know, looking at things like Condor, Condor is more of a, uh, like you said, a voluntary system where a uh, uh, the nodes are independent and are volunteering to participate in a cluster so that uh, everybody can get some work done, kind of like a SETI at home-ish sort of attitude. Uh, whereas Grid Engine assumes that there is a set amount of dedicated resources. This is in a data center. There is a master that owns the machines, and it's more of a, a union model, right? It's, uh, the, the, the orders are passed down from above, and the, the nodes that are in the, the compute grid are slaved to the master. Okay, so would you say that the philosophy is similar to more like Slurm, Torque, uh, some of the other resource managers that are out there? Absolutely. Okay, so can you integrate? Um, so you said that you have a scheduler. Uh, how complex a scheduling can you do? Uh, Grid Engine supports about as uh, complex a scheduling as as, <laughs> as anyone would be capable of understanding. Uh, one of the problems that you can easily get yourself into with Grid Engine is there are so many knobs and, and switches and buttons to play with on the scheduler that uh, you can end up with configurations that either make that, that are so complex that you can't tell if they're working or they're so complex that they're that they're not particularly useful. But we support. We support all the, the good stuff, the fair share scheduling of a couple of different varieties, you know, ticket-based policies, um, being able to do fine grain uh, resource quotas, uh, being able to do advanced reservation, um, resource reservation to prevent starvation.